Today, I am going to show you a better, easier, neater way to attach a collar with stand. In the last few years, I have been on a quest to find the easiest, best, neatest way to attach a collar with stand to a shirt, a blouse, a dress, whatever it may be. And there are many methods out there and I have tried virtually all of them and I am confident when I tell you that you are going to love this method that I am going to show you today. And I have looked high and low for other sources for this method and I haven't found it. In fact, the only place I have ever seen it is in a book uh, that is now out of print, if I remember correctly. And so I thought that I would just show you how to do it because it's perfect. Most pattern instructions will call that you finish your collar almost completely before you attach it to your shirt. So you are going to have the collar and the stand already assembled, except for a small amount of the seam allowance down here, which you will then attach to your shirt. And it goes something like this. You attach the outside of the stand to your shirt, and then eventually once the bottom of the collar stand is attached to the shirt, you will have to fold your seam allowances up. And then this piece here, which is the part that will touch your neck, you will have to fold the seam allowance and then very neatly try to match it to the seam that you just sewed. And it gets very complicated because you're trying to fold a more or less straight piece of fabric onto a curve and it's not easy. And it is particularly messy in the edges here because again, you have to somehow wriggle all of this neatly, fold it in, and then everything has to look nice. And it is difficult. I personally find this method very difficult, not just in the sort of sewing it together, but in the getting it to look nice. And I want things to look nice. And this method will particularly fail you in the most visible area of your shirt, which is the front. And the method that I'm going to show you today is going to eliminate all of that. It is going to eliminate any hand sewing that you might have to do on the neckline and it's going to make the most visible part of your collar, which is this front here. I'm not wearing a collar, but it is here. Extremely clean because there's not going to be any wriggling of fabric around. So let's get started. So for this method, you are going to attach the shoulder seams and you are going to finish the center fronts as the pattern calls for. And then you will also do the collar itself as the pattern calls for. Here I have already attached the collars, turned them inside out, top stitch them, so they are ready to attach to the stand. And here is where things differ from the traditional method. What we are going to do is keep the two collar stand pieces separate. And we're going to sandwich the shirt between the two collar pieces. So we're going to start pinning and you can do one at a time or you can do both at the same time, but you do need to make sure that you have marked where your collar meets the stand at both ends because we are going to attach that later. So the first thing that we do is pin. And like I said, make sure you have transferred all of your notches, all of your markings, so that you get a clean finish. Now here at the center front, you have to make sure that because the center fronts have already been finished, that the seam allowance and the notches should be there matches the center front. So you will have this bit of fabric here left over. And we are going to do the other side the same way.
And remember, when you are matching straight seams to concave seams, the parts that actually have to match are the seam lines, not the cutting lines. Okay. So you have one side already stitched, and this will be right side of the garment to the right side of the collar stand. And now we're going to do the other one. And this will be the wrong side of the garment to the right side of the collar stand. Matching the centers. Make sure again that here the notches match and you're going to match the seam allowances and the cut lines for the stand so that your shirt is sandwiched in between. And we're just going to keep pinning until we have it all in place. I'm going to clip a little bit into the shirt seam allowance just so that it lays nicely. You don't have to do this and if you're not comfortable doing this that is fine but it will make sewing the neckline a little easier. Another thing that will make sewing the neckline a little easier is if you reduce the seam allowance to approximately a quarter inch. Normally seam allowances are five eighths uh, for home sewing patterns and that is a lot to try to, uh, uh, to sort of match when you have seams that are concave to convex or concave to uh, straight. And if you reduce them to a quarter inch, then you don't have to clip. Remember I said to make sure to mark all your notches, particularly the notch that will match your collar to your collar stand. In my case, it's right here and I've made a cut, but I'm also going to mark inside the seam allowance because I want to know precisely where I need to start and finish sewing. So that is where it's gonna go. And in my case, my seam allowance is 3 8 so I'm going to make a mark here and I'm going to do the same on the other side. And now we are going to take this to the sewing machine. We are going to make sure not to catch the shirt by slightly folding it out of the way. And we're going to stitch from this dot all the way around the neckline edge, around the corner, and again to the other dot, making sure not to catch the shirt on your seam. We're going to sink the needle into that little spot we marked and start sewing. Here's a tip, in order to make sure that you can go smoothly around the curve of the collar, you may want to decrease your stitch length. I have it set up here for 1.75. This might be a little short, but it'll make it easier and we'll start sewing. Making sure to stick to our seam allowance. your foot and now you can do the neckline edge and at this point you can increase your stitch length again to a normal length sometimes it's difficult to not get little puckers on the first round and that's okay uh, if you can't live with your puckers then you can just unpick that little stretch of a, of a um, seam and redo it we're going to start sewing the curve again, so reduce your stitch length. And here, be mindful to move your shirt out of the way of your collar so that it does not get caught in the seam allowance. And make sure your notches are still aligned. And we're going to do the last bit of stitching. And we're going to end again at the red dot. Do not go past the dot, otherwise you'll sew into the space that will 
hold your collar. There we go. Back stitch and cut. The collar stand is attached to the shirt. And here is a very important step. You are going to take your scissors and fearlessly clip the collar stand to the dot, but not through the seam. This is going to help you fold it in a moment. There we go. And we are going to turn it just to make sure that everything is in the right place. And it is on that side. And let's see this side. Everything is. And just to make sure that it in fact lays nicely, we are going to trim the curve. You can also just notch it. And make sure not to trim past the clipping that you just made. So just trim the part where you actually seamed, but not the other part. And let's clip everything here. This is going to, again, make sure that that curve on the body of the shirt actually lays nicely and it doesn't pucker because it is such a concave curve. Instead of clipping, you could notch it, but I find that it doesn't really make that big a difference. You could also gray the seam or just trim it, which is what I'm doing here. we can turn it all right side out. Okay, so on this edge here, you can see that the center front of the shirt doesn't quite match up to the center front of the band that I sewed in. And that is not a problem. You can fix that. All right, so go back to your machine and sew a little bit closer to, like feel where your center front end, just sew a little bit closer there. So I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. All fixed, now it all matches up. Now this is a sample, so I'm not going to press it because it would take a long time, but when you do this at home, just do make sure that you press it well so that it looks nice and neat and make sure to pull out your curve and try to be a little bit neater than me. And when you have all that, this is what it should look like. You should have the top collar pieces not attached, but the center front's done and these little flappy bit bits at the end sticking up because that's where you made the clipping. It is all nice and neat. And this is the inside of the shirt. This is the part where you would normally have to then fold this bit under to attach it and whip stitch it or try very carefully to stitch it from the top, matching all the seams and catching both the upper collar and the lower collar. And this front bit here tends to look a little bit rough with a traditional method, but as you can see, it is nice and clean. There are no uh, visible seam lines. There is no hand stitching. You have not tried to wrestle a curved seam into a straight seam. It has been perfect so far. And now we attach the collar and we do that by laying our garment right side up. So this is the outside bit of the collar and we are going to attach it by lining up your finished edge of the collar to that little clipping you made, which is where the notch told you the collar should start and should end. And we're going to pin it in place all around, matching notches, matching center backs,
you see this here? That is where our color goes. All of my markings are lining up nicely. I think most pattern pieces do mark on the on the stand for the collar where the collar should start and should end but if it doesn't it's definitely something you will need to find out for yourself before you do this process otherwise you won't know where to start and where to finish your stitching um, of the collar to the body of the shirt and so now again we're going to take this to the machine we are going to stitch it from this end where we stopped stitching this stand to the other end where we stop stitching the stand. Make sure that your collar is right on that end of the seam, otherwise it will pucker slightly and we'll start stitching. And make sure that you're stitching only to the outside of the collar stand, not the inside. Just sink the needle right there and go. Okay, we are coming to the end, and again, we need to make sure that we stop stitching where the previous stitch line ends and make sure that everything is nice and neat and make sure we are not catching the inside uh, collar band. We have attached the collar to the outer collar stand and now we are going to fold it in just like so. And this is what it's going to look like from the outside. And again, it needs a really good pressing, but we're almost done. And now the only thing left to do is take this part and fold the seam allowance under there you go. so that it matches the stitch line at the top. And we are going to pin it in place. all the way around making sure that the ends are super neat and the reason that we made the clip here before was one to make it easier to stitch but also so that we could then take the seam allowance that we know exactly how much it is and turn it under the correct amount and pin it in place and now it's all going to look nice and neat and rounded So we're just going to keep going, making sure to turn on the seam allowance and matching to the seam for the collar. Just going to do it all over. This is a method that works best if you are already planning on top stitching because it gets attached, this bit gets sewn down with top stitching. So if you are not going to top stitch, maybe this method is not the best for you, even though it's going to look nice. And so we are going to take this to the sewing machine. We are going to top stitch and it will be both the top stitching and the seam that is going to hold the inside of the collar stand to the rest of the collar. For this seam, you can start either at the top or the bottom. It doesn't matter. You're just going to go around in a circle. I'm going to start at the top because that will be the part that the collar covers. So it will cover the back stitch at the beginning and the end. And we are going to do it from the right side. So I will have to reach in there and grab my pins. Here you want to make sure not to stitch in the ditch because if you do, you won't catch the inside of the collar stand. So what you need to do is stitch inside of the collar stand. That way you catch the inside. And this is just like any other top stitching. The amount within the collar that you stitch is entirely up to you. I am going to go about an eighth of an inch and put my foot down. I'm using my foot as a guide. And take this out. And we are going to go. 
And again, we're coming to a curve, so we're going to take it nice and easy. And turn around. If your machine is having a difficult time moving fabric when there is no fabric behind here, you can just use a hump jumper. That's what people call this. I'm not entirely sure what the name is, but it's just a tool you put on the back of your presser foot and now you sew and it will move your fabric because it levels out the presser foot so that it's not at an angle where it can move your fabric. And that is it. Here is your collar. This is the outside of the collar stand. This is the part of the collar that folds down. And on the inside, everything is nice and neat. There is nothing that is bunching up here. You did not have to wrestle this front into the color because that sometimes can be pretty difficult if you have um, bulky seams in bulkier fabric and yes it is amazing and it is the method that produces the best looking color that I have ever tried and this is the only way that I am doing all of my colors from now on. I hope that this has been helpful. If it has I am going to ask something I haven't asked in a long time. If you like this video like it and subscribe if you like content like this or just the content that is on my channel. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!